persons who are to spend several years on the project before reaching the culmination of their work, found which is a big step toward the goal they're seeking. And they call it metacortin. Extensive clinical investigation proves the new drug to be effective in the treatment, not only of arthritis, but also of asthma, bursitis, rheumatic fever, and other diseases. So at last, metacortin goes into production. To the basic metacortin powder are added other materials necessary for compounding the drug. The mixed powders are dried for 24 hours to prepare them to be pressed into tablets. Here on a battery of machines, the metacortin tablets are formed. At high speed, accurate amounts of the powder are measured out and compressed into units, each of which is in every way exactly like all the others. Bottling, too, is accomplished with great speed, but at the same time with full attention to the requirements for accuracy and purity so rigidly adhered to by our pharmaceutical manufacturers. Another wonder drug, which, like all the others, is not really the result of some sudden, unexpected, miraculous discovery, but is rather like the salt vaccine, penicillin, and the rest, the product of coordinated scientific inquiry directed toward a specific goal by the resources of modern industry. All Americans have benefited under our system of free competitive enterprise. Our way of life in this country is built on individual freedom and individual opportunity. Opportunity, as we know it, means freedom of choice. Here we can choose our own religion, our own occupation, and our own political party. We can decide whether or not we want to work for somebody or start a business for ourselves. This is the reason the American standard of living has gone up and up. The reason it always goes up because of opportunity, the freedom of choice. At a window shade factory in Cincinnati, the product undergoes a destruction test. This company, Clopay Corporation, has been manufacturing window shades for almost half a century. And yet, in spite of heavy competition from other, newer types of window coverings, the firm is doing better than ever. Let's mosey around the plant and see if we can find out why. We start in the department where wooden rollers are fabricated. Here are assembled the spring motors which wind up the shades on their rollers. So far, except for the up-to-date machinery which helps to keep product costs way down, we haven't seen much that would account for the continued growth of the audition. But let's go on looking. The finished motors, after inspection, are inserted into one end of the rollers and pivot pins into the other. Crimping fixes them in place firmly. Now we come to one of the processes that have given window shades new popularity, embossing, which impresses into the material any number of interesting surface patterns and textures. Here's a coating the paper or cloth with a washable plastic, which comes in many pastel and decorator colors, including a white which is absolutely opaque. Shades that are all plastic, shades that can be quickly cut to exact size at the point of sale, shades with all sorts of new attractive features. These are the things which have brought renewed vigor to an industry that some pessimists thought was finished. The sheets of shade material now are taped, hemmed and fitted with slats at the bottom, after which they're ready to be attached to the rollers, wound up and packaged for shipment. Having equipped itself with machines for producing plastic shade material, the company went out and developed other markets for extruded plastic, both in transparent sheet form and in the processed state. In its program of diversification, the firm also came up with brand new products right down its alley. For example, the accordion doors we see being fabricated here. Inexpensive and simple to install, the doors are designed for use as space savers in homes and apartments. 
Thus, through product improvement, diversification, and the development of new products, does far-sighted management assure itself and its employees of a future as busy and profitable as its past. Women employees of a Jacksonville cigar company report at the plant to start their workday. Are they all babysitters? No, the children are their own children, and they come along to the factory with mother every day. While mama works, little Larry or Linda will enjoy all the pleasures and the protection of a first-rate nursery school. The nursery operated here in the plant of King Edward Cigar Company is an outstanding example of the type of service provided by many firms for working mothers of preschool children. Because they know their little ones are in good hands, the women can turn to their jobs with their minds free of the worries they would have were the children under less capable supervision. These mothers are employed in the cellophaning department, where they supply and supervise the operations of machines that wrap some two million cigars a day. The transparent wrapping flows down and is whipped around the cigars too fast for the eye to follow, except with the help of our slow motion camera. The machines are fabulous, all right, but there are still many operations that are best performed by human hands guided by a human mind. This woman, for example, not only boxes the cigars, but inspects them as she does so. Meanwhile, up on the third floor, the youngsters play games, learn elementary lessons in other, eat nourishing food at lunch and snack periods, and generally have a high old time of it. <laughs> 